Hey everyone, uh, it's Tuesday the 7th. Uh, so we had some pretty bad news today. Um, Liz's genetic test results have finally come back from Oxford University Hospitals and uh, she has a confirmed diagnosis for myotonic dystrophy. Um, <clears throat> so we now have to get Liz's mum, her brother, John, our children, Alice and Anthony, screened. Uh, each of our kids has got a 50-50 chance of having it. Um, and of course, if they've got it, they could pass it on to their children, etc, etc. Um, it's most likely to have come from one of Liz's parents, although there is a possibility it just spontaneously happened, but uh, that's not very likely. Um, <clears throat> Liz obviously very upset today. I'm quite upset right now, if I'm honest with you. Um, yeah. Um, so. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we know now. So. <clears throat> In my opinion, we're in a better position than we were in yesterday in that we know it's no longer an unknown, right? Um, like the neurologist guy said, when Liz left hospital last time, we didn't know what the problem was. Now we know and we can manage it. Myotonic dystrophy has no cure. Um, all we can do is manage the symptoms. And... Everything we've seen in Liz prior to this, it all just makes sense. It all adds up now, you know. Um, I'm convinced my son Anthony is showing signs of it. Uh, we've, we're worried about her brother, who's also possibly showing signs of it. Um, basically, what I have to do now is contact... Well, what we have to do is contact the relevant GPs and... Get, them, get the people screened. So <clears throat> I called Anthony's GP today and I've got an appointment, a call booked for a couple of weeks time. Um, it's gonna have to be with me. I said Anthony is in no position to handle such a call or take such a call because of his other issues. Um, I tried talking to the same surgery about Alice, but no, she's gotta make her own phone call. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so myotonic dystrophy can affect heart, lungs, other muscular areas and can also form, make, cause early forming of cataracts. Um, you know, Liz, prior to hospital, she couldn't open jars or cans with her fingers she couldn't open the tumble dryer she couldn't take the handbrake off her car she couldn't move the seat on her car she was going up to bed crawling on all fours up the stairs i mean you know it sounds ridiculous right but we never put we never thought there was anything substantially wrong with her of course we just never put two and two together and i know that sounds mad right now that now that we kind of now that we can see this bigger picture for what it is you know um but um, um, yeah, so we know now, um, I got told the aim was still to take the tracheostomy tube out. I, I get that, right? People don't generally walk around with a hole in their neck, but I am absolutely petrified that Liz is going to be at home, maybe lying in bed, choking, and I'll have no remote access and I won't be able to do anything about it. So at least if there's a tracheostomy tube... I can do something about it, or try anyway, you know, without remote access, I don't know what I can do. Um, I get that might be the aim, but <laughs> I also want to keep her alive. She's made it abundantly clear several times, including today, she doesn't want to die, she wants to live. Now on this topic, I asked about this previous consultant, Irene, whatever her name was, is you know, statement that, oh, if she had a positive diagnosis, we would not have intubated her. 
Not correct. I mean, it's all based on, of course, on the patient's wishes. If the patient has a DNR, then of course they won't resuscitate. But Liz doesn't have a DNR. She wants to live. You know, I got told I wouldn't be able to get care at home. But bullshit. I got told I wouldn't be able to have oxygen at home. Bullshit. You know, um, a whole load of what I've been told by this woman is just utter, utter rubbish. And it's, I'm very annoyed about that. I basically had this meeting with her two and a half months ago and she basically said, you know, my whole family was going to die and that's not necessarily the case, you know? And um, it's just kind of, <clears throat> for two and a half months now, I've been living in this, in this fearful situation and it's not as bad as, this, as she said, you know? Um, I'm just going to check my notes here because obviously this is a lot to take in, right? Um, so, um, yeah, we need to go to the <coughs> test, need to be go to the relevant clinical genetics department, which for us is Southampton. Um, Oh yeah, we can get screening done on the NHS because of course the GPs, the doctors, want to, you know, they'll want to know if something's wrong with one of their <clears throat> um, patients because they'll, they'll want to know how to manage it. So again, more bullshit that I was told, you know. Um, so Liz has type 1, it's called type 1 DM. Um, as I say, it's a mutation in a specific gene. Type 1 is the more serious type because of course it is. Um, it can skip a generation, um, but you know, um, not, not necessarily. Um, tomorrow I am <clears throat> taking Liz, I'm going to the hospital early um, at 11 a.m. to take Liz to her ENT appointment, which is just downstairs in the same hospital she wants me with her. So we'll wheel her down here in a wheelchair. So I'm taking the day off. Um, I got my holiday wrong at work. I don't have 9.66 days left. After tomorrow, I've got 3.66 days left. I've got three and a half days holiday for the rest of the year. And we're in May. We're not even halfway through the year. So when Liz comes home, I'm going to have to take some unpaid leave to look after her. And I might have to give up work completely. Um, now that we know it's myotonic dystrophy and it's, you know, Liz won't be able to work again, we can look into... Um, you know, some kind of benefits or whatever for Liz, if they'll let us have any. In my experience, that's not always the case. Um, they made us pay back a child load of child benefit and was stopped for any future child benefit when they found out I was earning too much money. And I also claimed for the six months that I was unemployed because of COVID, I had to pay my universal credit back. So, you know, Anything I've ever paid, I've, had, I've been paid, I've had to pay it back. So I'm not overly confident that we'll be able to get anything, but who knows? Yeah, so on the one side, I am pleased that we finally have a confirmed diagnosis. On the other side, of course, it's, this is big news and now we've got to deal with it and cope with it. Um, so... I popped into town today because I had to pick up Anthony from college at 3.30. So I didn't, I left, finished work at two and went to town to get um, some wrapping paper for Liz and get her a last minute Christmas uh, birthday present. I've already got her some presents, but I, I, there was something else I had to pick up. And I'm not going to name the store that I went to because in case Liz is watching this and it'll give away what I've bought her. Um, but I was in this store and a lovely young lady named Izzy served me and was asking me who the present was for and I got to telling her and she asked my name and she was really, really kind to me, shook my hand, said I should pop in again if I get any more news. So I wrote to her head office saying what a nice lady she was and thank you for being so nice to me. Um, the thing is, right, she's quite young and I'm 53, and I, and, I, and I worry too much, and I'm thinking, oh, is that inappropriate, right? Is it going to be some kind of, like, weird come on? It's not. I'm just expressing appreciation for somebody being nice to me. 
I don't get out very much. I don't get to talk to very many people. And it's just kind of nice that, you know, I kind of had that connection. It made me feel very nice. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. Um, as I say, that's the news today. Oh, yeah. Other news. Before we had this news about the myotonic dystrophy, Thursday is Lizzie's birthday. And we made it abundantly clear that... She did not want the rig tube fitted into her stomach on that day. So, hey, guess what day they booked the appointment for? We weren't happy. We've now had it amended to a week Friday, the 21st. I can't remember now. I'm losing track of all the dates. A week Friday. A week Friday is... I don't know. 9th? 17th, sorry. 17th. 17th she's having it done so you know I suppose you should be grateful that this uh, genetic results didn't come back on her birthday yeah and in other other news um, I put a plea out in a previous episode for the orange uh, lego plush space being and the alien someone thank you Paul Heath has I found them for me in the States, in a Target. And he's going to work out how much they're going to be to send them to me, and I'm going to send you the money on pay via PayPal, and then I'll have the complete collection. So um, <clears throat> everyone can stand down now on that on that topic. Um, so, yeah. Um, this vlog is uh, my way of trying to cope with stuff. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'm going to go and edit this video and have a good long think about life, the universe and everything. If you enjoy what I do here, although I can't think why, please remember to click the like button, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. You might also want to check out my website www.worldsbestestpoet.com if you fancy a laugh.